Okay, so this is part two when I want to talk about density and percent error. So just really quickly, I want to mention the learning intentions and the success criteria. Once again, you should understand what density is, why it's an intensive property, and how percent error is going to show accuracy. You should be able to solve for density, mass, or volume for any given substance, and you should be able to solve for percent error. So let's first talk about what density is. It is the degree of compactness, and it's measured by the quantity of mass per unit volume. As I talked about in the previous lecture that you watched, the unit for it is grams per milliliter, generally. You can also use grams per liter or even grams per centimeter cubed. There's a bunch of different ways to record it, but the metric one is going to be grams per milliliter most of the time. Okay. Uh, mass and volume are two properties that are going to change as your amount of thing changes. So like if you have um, a handful of gold, that mass is going to be different than if you had a really big block of it. Um, and obviously a handful of gold is going to have a different volume than the really big block of it. So those, those are changing properties, so they're referred to as extensive properties. Density, on the other hand, <clears throat> no matter how much you have, that substance is going to have the same density. And since that is going to remain constant, that is what makes density an intensive property. So I'll talk later about more about the difference between intensive and extensive properties, but for now, just know density is intensive. Okay? And the formula for density is density equals mass divided by volume, which you see down below. So if we were going to do a sample problem, figuring out the density of an aluminum nail with a mass of 6.8 grams, if it has a volume of 51.27 milliliters, what we would do is we would set that up D equals M over V, just like this formula right here. So the way that you do that is you take the numbers in your problem and you start filling a few things in. So for this one, we're figuring out density. That's what we're trying to figure out. So that's going to be our unknown. It gives you 6.8 grams, which is your mass, and it gives you 51.27 milliliters, which is your volume. Now that's really the first step of any problem is figuring out what it is that you have and what it is that you need. If it's saying calculate density, density is what you need. Any numbers they give you is what you have. So when you're filling in the D equals M over V, D equals, well, it's going to be your mass, your 6.8 grams, over your 51.27 milliliters. Okay? And then once you do that calculation, you're gonna get your answer. And in this case, it's 0 0.13 grams per milliliter. And the reason that density's unit is grams per milliliter is because when you divide a mass in grams by a volume in milliliters, that's what you end up with. None of those units cancel out. Okay, so really quickly, I wanna do another example problem with you right here. And this says calculate the mass of a copper coin if it has a volume of 0 0.05 liters if gold has a density of 11.3 grams per liter. <clears throat> now what I want you to pay attention to here is we're not dealing with grams per milliliter, we're dealing with grams per liter. That's okay. You can express density in grams per liter, but you do have to list what unit you are actually using. Because let's say this was given to us in grams per milliliter, but the density was given in grams per liter, that those units then don't match and you would have to do some converting before you start the problem. But in this case, we're fine. We have liters. We want grams per liter, so it's okay. We're still using the D equals M over V formula, but in this case, we know what that density is. That's one of our given numbers, so we can just go ahead really, really quickly and plug in 11.3 grams per liter in for D. It says calculate the mass. That's what we want. 
So that's our variable. And it gives you, this isn't milliliters, but it gives you the volume. So you just go ahead and plug in 0 0.05 liters here. And then you are going to solve for m. Now, this is something, and initially when I first started teaching, it kind of surprised me, but some of you are probably going to struggle with figuring out how to isolate things, figuring out how to solve for things. That's a math skill. And this is going to allow you to practice that math skill. Okay, so when we're doing this problem, let's say we isolate m and you do that, solve for m by multiplying these two together, multiply 0 0.05 on both sides, it cancels out on this side, you will do your 11.3 times 0 0.05 and you get 0 0.565 grams per liter. Or sorry, not grams per liter, grams, because this liter is gonna go away when you do that multiplication. But what I want you to notice really quickly right here is significant figures, because this number I got from raw multiplication. But if you recall the significant figures deal of our problem, you know that you can't just do raw multiplication and have an accurate answer in science. So you have to figure out, well, how many sig figs can my answer even have? This one has three sig figs. This one, on the other hand, only has one sig fig, only one because of this five right here. Placeholder zeros don't count. So your answer can only have one significant figure. So you're gonna have to round this off to one significant figure. So to do that, this is actually going to round to 0 0.6 grams. I know it feels wrong, terribly sorry about that, but it is something that you're gonna have to pay attention to. So we're gonna move on. I want you guys to do this on your own. I want you to pause the video right now. I want you to do it on your own and we will go over the answer to it when I see you next, okay? This is percent error. Percent error is the measurement of the discrepancy between an experimental value and a true accepted value or essentially what you calculated versus what you actually got. Now, let me just explain this formula real quick because your percent error or how much you were off by, you have to take the absolute value. That's what these two vertical lines mean. That's absolute value. Meaning even if you get a negative number, it doesn't matter because you're gonna get rid of that negative. That's what absolute value is. So whatever, experimentally was determined, like let's say you did an experiment and you got 0.3 grams of product, that's your experimental value. Your accepted value is going to be how much you thought you were going to get. Like let's say given your amount of reactants before the experiment, you calculated that you should have gotten 0.6 grams of product, but you only got 0.3. So your accepted value, how much you thought you should get, is your accepted value. And then how much you actually got is your experimental value. And you can't see it because it cut it off, but that's actually times 100. So times 100, not times 10. Sorry that it got cut off, I apologize. But we're gonna do a problem and I'm gonna explain this to you. Okay, let's move on. So like I said, your actual value is your actual value. That's anything that you could get in a, in a literary text. So assuming you were reading a scientific book, that's something that you could get through that information or a known value or a standard value or something that's been published by researchers and vetted. Your experimental value is going to be what you obtained in a lab setting, as I said before. So let's do a sample problem. Um, this says the mass of one mole of nitrogen gas is determined in an experiment by, to be 26.8 grams per mole. Calculate the percent error given that the literature value for this mass is 28.0 grams per mole. So what you're going to do here is you're going to do, again, I'm going to write down the formula, your expected, or sorry, your experimental value, 
minus your actual value. So that's your absolute value of that entire thing divided by your actual value times 100. Okay? So your experimental value in this case is 26.8 grams per mole. You're going to subtract 28 grams per mole because that is your actual value, your literature value. You're going to take the absolute value of that. You're going to divide it by your actual value, by your 28 grams per mole. And that answer, you're going to multiply by 100 to get your final answer over there. Okay? So let's do that real quick. So when I did this problem, let me change the color so my answer is obvious. When I did this problem, I did my 26.8 minus my 28. Absolute value it divided it by 28. I got 0 0.043. Now, I listed a bunch of decimal places. Now, let's look at what we have in terms of significant figures, because remember, we do have to pay attention to significant figures. Now, we have one, two, three significant figures here. We have one, two, three significant figures there. So our answer should have three significant figures. So we have one, we have this multiplication that needs to be done, which is going to turn into 40 or 4.3. Now, that's only two significant figures. So what you're going to do in that case is you would round that off to 4.30, giving us three significant figures. And remember, we're doing percentages. So this is a percent at the end. It means we were off by 4.3%. Now. What I want to express to you guys right now is that percent error, it's not something that we take lightly. We actually take this really seriously in science because there are always side reactions that go on. There's always energy loss. There's always some sort of error that goes on. So we need percent error to represent how accurate we're being, how precise we're being. It's just another facet of keeping control over our experimentation. So if you, if you are a little bit confused right now, that's okay. I'm going to go over this more when I see you next.